I'm Catherine Nestlethine. Um, I grew up in, in North London uh, in a non-Muslim family. We weren't religious at all. I'm um, going back. My, my grandfather used to go to church, but I wasn't even christened. So um, when I was growing up, I, I kind of thought of religion as something a bit old-fashioned. You know, that's something the you know the old people did go to church. You know. Um, but I didn't see that it had any, any kind of relevance. Um, and again, you know, when I was at school, I didn't really know much about Islam. I didn't know any Muslims. Um, all that I knew was just from the media, which is obviously the normal kind of stereotypes about oppressed women and terrorists. Um, so it then wasn't until I was uh, went to sixth form to do my A-levels when I was 16 that there were some Muslims there, so that's the first time that I really came across Islam. Then, uh, you know, I started to find out a bit about Islam from, from them. I remember um, Ramadan and the Muslims at, at school fasting, and I was really curious, what do you believe so strongly that you will give up food and drink for 30 days, you know, during daylight? Um, so, again, I was quite surprised to find, you know, people who were... Again, my own age seemed seemed normal. Seemed to think about what they believed for themselves, and believed in God, believed in the day of judgment. You know, I I didn't hadn't had any friends before who were uh, who were really religious. It was something that again older relatives or whatever were 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 into. Um, I started reading books about Islam, uh, looking at websites, asking questions of of different Muslims. Um, and again, observing, you know, my Muslim friends, you know, how they lived, how their families lived and, you know, and things like I was really impressed from the beginning with the concept of charity in Islam, like how integral it was, like giving to, to charity and doing uh, things to help, help others. Um, the fact that the Quran appeals to reason, um, it says, look at the signs of God in, in nature. I found really struck me. Things about the Islamic lifestyle, actually it makes sense that society would be better off if we didn't drink alcohol. The fact that in Islam it's a purely monotheistic faith, you know, that there's there's no complicated concepts of, of Trinity, you know, it's just one God uh, who, again, there's no, you know, intercession through saints or, it's very simple religion um, and that very much appealed to me. You know, there was the the life of the prophet, peace be upon him. The fact that he was a prophet of God is actually the most rational uh, explanation. Um, so, you know, those those things about Islam and again, seeing the role of charity in Islam, you know, seeing the discipline of, of Ramadan. Um, yeah, I finally decided to become Muslim when I was 20. I'd been reading about it for a couple of years and it had got to the point where I knew that Islam was the truth, but I'd been struggling with actually committing to, to practice it. And I remember um, deciding that, yeah, I'm going to go to the mosque, I'm going to take Shahada. Um, and I remember sitting in the park um, on my way to the mosque and just going over in my head again that, yeah, I'm sure about this and all the reasons that I was wanting to become Muslim. Um, and then it was very simple, you know, just going in, uh, the Imam teaching me the Arabic for the Shahada, um, and then some sisters at the mosque, um, you know, helping me to learn, start, begin to learn the prayers. So then, yeah, I started to, to learn the prayers and to pray at home. And it was a little while before I told my friends and, and family, not, not too long. I met my husband online actually on a Muslim marriage site and then um, we got, got married quite quickly and he moved down to, to London from, from Manchester and um, yeah our, our, our little girl was then born just, just, just three, three weeks ago so you know, I think um, alhamdulillah we're really lucky that uh, my husband's self-employed so he's got quite a lot of flexibility to spend time with, with, with me and our baby well, we can get it. You can look after the, the chops, okay? For okay, a few minutes. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, just I for think a few minutes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow! Mashallah, 
she's she's settling in quite a lot, quite well um, so far. So, oh, I say, it's my mum. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> you, I mentioned the night that the yes, you did. Press TV. Yeah. Yes. I, I I just popped out and um, I brought you a gift of halal lamb chop. Oh, thank you. Fantastic. So, fantastic. Yes, I, I won't breathe on that, so I might have a bug. Oh, okay. cool. <laughs> Thanks, Mummy. Um, well, on the website where we met, um, you write something a, a bit about yourself, and there's three, four points which really, really stood out to me. The first point is that she worked as a nursery school teacher, so that automatically it said, yeah, she must be good with kids, because obviously I want somebody who's going to be good with kids, and she'd been doing that for 10 years at the time. The second thing was that she was very, very family orientated. You know, she spends a lot of time with the family, and again, that's something which I really, really liked. Um, another point was she was um, politically active, so she was very keen on politics, very keen on helping, you know, fellow Muslims around the world, doing her bit to make their lives, you know, it's all well and good us living here and having a cushy life, but there's, you know, Muslims suffering all over the world, and she was very keen, she is still very keen on, on working in that kind of field. And the last thing, the fourth paragraph she wrote is, um, she's very sporty, she likes tennis, she likes skiing, and those are the kind of things which I like as well, because I'm a very sporty person. So, you know, it's like, on paper at least, it sounded like a fantastic match, you know? Somebody who's converted has done it for a reason. They thought it through, whereas a lot of us who were born Muslims you know, maybe we don't understand why we are Muslims. Maybe it's just because our parents are Muslims, we're Muslims, without thinking necessarily too much in depth about it. Whereas somebody who's come from outside, they must have done a lot of research in on the first place to decide, okay, once upon a time I had this way of life, but I don't want this way of life. I want a different kind of lifestyle. You know, so, you know, good, good, I'm really, you know, impressed by people who can do that. You know, she has a different way of seeing things to what I do, because she will question things more. Whereas me being a born Muslim, I would readily accept things. Whereas she wouldn't accept things readily. She would want to know why is this rule? Or why is it that rule? And that's something which, which is a good thing, because we should always question. She's been a very peaceful baby so far, mashallah. She's, she's quite sleepy. Um, but yeah, I'm sure it's a question of squeezing, squeezing things in. I, I, you know, I know people who have kids and uh, are very active, but it's a, it's a different lifestyle. I was really lucky that my family uh, were always took the attitude, well, whatever makes you happy, we'll support. Um, I don't think it was too much of a surprise because they knew that I'd been finding out about Islam, and. You know, they may not quite understand why Islam makes me happy. For instance, not drinking is, is, is a very different, uh, you know, culture. But, um, you know, it's, it's really nice. For instance, my mum uh, always goes out to the halal, halal butcher to, to get something to make a roast dinner for us when we come over. And um, I always try and visit my family on Eid. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's quite good. And, Almost, uh, I think my family almost see it as just something a bit eccentric. You know, my dad will introduce me to his friends. Have you met my Islamic daughter? <laughs> you know, so it's something unusual and almost quite cool because uh, it's different. So I've been really, really lucky to have that. Um, again, I go down, I visit my family in, in Devon in the middle of the countryside where there's like hardly any Muslims. And, you know, Nobody, nobody's hostile, nobody even really treats you as, as, as different, you know, it's, people react as if they see headscarves there every day, so. I, as a woman, I definitely haven't seen Islam as something that limits me in any way. Um, I, I see Islam as something that empowers women um, to not be judged on kind of narrow appearances, but to actually make a contribution to society in our own right. Um, and certainly the, the, the stereotypes about oppressed women, my, 
sometimes my mum comes across people who who say, oh, you know, Islam is really oppressive towards women. She says, have you met my daughter? She is not oppressed. <laughs> Um, so, but at the same time, there there are Muslim women who who are oppressed. There's, there is a lot of cultures in the Muslim world that are oppressive towards women, and I think it's important that Muslim women reclaim our Islamic rights and you know liberate ourselves from an Islamic perspective. One of the most amazing experiences I've had as a Muslim was um, being able to go on a Hajj a few years ago. Um, as it happens, we were in the same same group, so as as you know, it was totally um, different experience from our you know everyday lives here. I've always wanted to go. Medina was such a peaceful place to be. Um, and I think also the experience of being in the Hajj with like three million other Muslims from all around the world was just amazing. And I remember uh, in Medina before everyone, uh, you know, changed and became this sea of white, um, that everybody was in their different national costumes and seeing Muslims from China, from Turkey, the African ladies in their colourful African prints. We've been to Ziara, we've been to, to visit the grave of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and to pray to Raqqa in the, the mosque, uh, the original mosque where the, the Prophet and his companions used to pray. But ever since I became Muslim, I, I really, really wanted to, to come for the Hajj. So I'm so grateful and happy that, you know, inshallah, we'll be doing that. Going around Medina, seeing all the historical sites, seeing the site of the the, the Battle of Uhud, we stopped um, at, at Bada as well on 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 the way. Um, seeing, um, you know, again the 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 mosque where where the Qibla was was changed. You know, these all these events from the life of the Prophet peace be upon him, like really you know you felt so much more connected to 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 that being in those places and for me having had that experience of, of hajj has been something that I can keep with me, you know, ever since. And, you know, you, you turn in the direction of the Kaaba and you know the place that you're, you're turning towards. And, you know, if there's times that, that, that are hard things that you're going through, then those memories are actually something that really gives me a lot of strength uh, in my life, I think. <laughs> وابن عمتك الموالي لوليك المعادي لعدوك استجار بمشهدك وتقرب إلى الله. Well, I think one thing that happened gradually, but that has really changed the way that I look look at things, is becoming aware of the concept of ummah, uh, of being part of a global Muslim community and having a responsibility to people around the world, those who are being oppressed, those who are, are suffering for all different reasons. And the fact that here, where we're, we have everything that we could want in terms of comfort and luxuries and everything, and yet we've got that connection with people that we have a responsibility to. You know, some of the beautiful uh, sayings of the, the Prophet, peace be upon him, that um, the Ummah is like one body, so if one part feels the pain, the whole of it feels the pain. That totally transforms the way that you're going to see the world, you know, if, if you think about it. Um, and again, you know, to me, 
Islam is about action. You know, the, the Prophet peace be upon him said, if any of you sees a wrong, change it with his hand. And if he's unable, um, then with his tongue. And only if he's unable, uh, then hate it in his heart. So, um, you know, I gradually um, started to become involved in, in activism. Um, I think uh, when I saw the Iraq war, um, I hadn't been Muslim for very long at, at that stage, but I then really became aware of the fact that these are my brothers and sisters out there, and this is my government that is, is doing this, and I've got a responsibility as a Muslim to do what I can to get politically active, to um, not just go on the, on the march and that's it, well, I couldn't do anything, but you know, really try and do everything through, through campaigning, through the media, through politics. Um, so that's then become, uh, you know, a big part of, of my life is the, the campaigning work. Um, I joined an organisation called Muslim Public Affairs Committee. Um, shortly after the Iraq War, uh, we campaigned in, a, in an election just after the war and managed to um, get rid of an MP that was pro-war. Um, just going, going door to door to all the Muslim households with leaflets saying, you know, this person supported the war use your vote to, to get rid of them. And that was, um, that was a real eye-opener to see that actually through political campaigning, we made a difference. A dif an anti-war MP was elected who then went on to campaign from Guantanamo. We can make a difference. And that means we've got a huge responsibility because again, you see the pictures on telly and it can seem not real. But when you realize, hang on, if that was my own sister, in Palestine there, how would I feel and what would I want people to do? So that's really sort of transformed my life because, you know, there's so much work to, to do and my work with um, with MPAT, Muslim Public Affairs Committee, you know, it'll take up, you know, a lot of my spare time and going up and down the country campaigning and again, media, media work because after I became Muslim, it really started to get to me the way that Islam and Muslims are portrayed in the mainstream media, you know, because suddenly I was seeing myself reflected back in this hugely distorted way and my faith. And um, so I think because I'd come from a politically active family, it was natural to me to start campaigning, start writing letters, emails. And again, when, when I became involved with um, MPAC, the campaigns we did actually got the BBC to apologise for certain things and uh, newspapers to make corrections and publish letters. Um, and then later on, um, when that British teacher was arrested in Sudan um, and it was really negative in, in the media, we organised a, a demonstration with MPAC um, outside the Sudanese embassy, uh, other organisations we worked with. and. Uh, our pictures were on the front page of the Sunday Times, uh, lots of newspapers holding up teddy bears outside the Sudanese embassy saying, you know, release the teacher. This is not done in the name of Islam that, that she's been arrested and people are threatening her, her life. Um, so again, we could really see it made a, made a difference. Yeah. So this was when... Um, when we organised the demonstration, um, when the teacher was arrested about the teddy bear. So yeah, you can see on the Sunday Times, it was like, you know, on the front page saying that, that Muslims were trying to campaign to help this teacher. And, you know, we were all in the, um, in the BBC website. Oh, shh. And the Independent. And I mean, all these pictures um, picked it, uh, you know, picked up the story, and you know they had, ooh, you know, Muslims protest outside Sudan's London embassy, ooh, and and the quotes were already, you know, positive. So I think, um, you know, that really opened my eyes. That it's not just that the that the media is against Muslims. That Muslims can do a lot more to help ourselves have a positive, uh, positive image in the media if we got active like that. Oh, isn't it? So that people don't grow up thinking. Oh, because oh, we don't want people calling 
you were a terrorist in the playground. Joey. So obviously now, um, now the baby's here, it's much easier to do most of my work um, online from from the computer. And the internet is great for campaigning nowadays. You can run a lot of, of campaigns you know, from right from your living room. So this is the Impact website, um, articles. There's a lot of resources on campaigning, what you can do um, to actually do something practical to help, help them. Uh, articles in jihad, a lot of Muslims are afraid of the word jihad despite we find it in the in the Quran but you know obviously it's not it's it doesn't mean what people think it, it you know the general misconception um, it, it means to struggle uh, and to strive to against oppression and um, you know as British Muslims we've got more opportunities to, to do something effective to help the Ummah through politics and media because if you think about Iraq before um, before the bombs were dropped on Iraq, it was the decision made in the corridors of power right here in, in Westminster, in London, and that's something that we can do something about. So, uh, oh yeah, here's, here's um, some of the media work uh, we did, we've done. This was when, when Osama bin Laden was killed, obviously, you know, people were saying, oh, the, you know, the British Muslims support him, you know, and so we went on like breakfast telly on, on behalf of MPAC just to come and put a you know Muslim point of view. I think my life would definitely have been a very different trajectory if I hadn't become Muslim. Um, I used to drink a lot when I was a teenager. Um, you know, I wouldn't have married a, a Muslim man. I, I wouldn't be bringing up my, my, my children Muslim, inshallah and um, all the experiences I've had working for MPAC campaigning on Islamic issues, you know, I wouldn't have, have done those things. And I've had such an interesting experience. I've met so many really interesting uh, brothers and sisters. Um, you know, it's been really rich in that way, as well as obviously having that. I can't imagine now not having that faith in my life, not having that, that sense of direction and, and purpose um, and those, that guidance for living because, you know, it gives you that, that anchor and it gives you those, those limits and those parameters to, to live within.